Hello everybody, welcome to the round of 32 match of CCL Season 45 between Elyod and his 123 game Nurgle now versus Harpik and his Halflings. Now his Halflings go, it's actually a pretty good Halfling team, right? He's got this, well, okay, no it's not, he's minus movement. If this guy was plus move, it'd be a pretty good Halfling team. But yeah, his edge 4 is minus movement, which is terrible. You know, so very low TV, he got the um, Chef, which only stole one reroll. He's got a bribe, he's got two babes, he's got the wizard, he's got Morg, and Deep Root. So he's got two absolutely incredible players, he's got four huge strong strength players to do things. But, unfortunately, unfortunately for him, he's up against Elyod and his ridiculous 123 game Nurgle team. And it's not actually that good, it's not like the best Nurgle team that's ever been in Chalice or anything. But like, it's pretty good isn't it? Two really good warriors there, even though one's one's armor 8. This one's really good, even though he's armor eight. This one's nearly really good, but he's he's still quite good. Claw pump without tackle though, and so he's actually lacking tackle, right? But obviously the beast is great against uh, halflings. So he, but he's got he's got strength four horns, mighty blow frenzy. So this guy annihilates flings, and then he's got this tackler, and he's got to carry on a, a bolt bitch as they're known <laughs> to uh, avoid the wizard, but. Uh, Oh wow, he's just going straight in. He could have just he could have just scored then, couldn't he? He could have literally just scored. Imagine if like the, the fling had just landed there and Bosch just instantly scored. No, that the, the that Nurgle team had the best record, Pedro Jack, but um it was not it was not a great team. And plus my Chaos team was better. And got to the semi final and lost to Inari and Duke of Dice. So you know it, it should have made the final the Chaos team that I took instead. Extraordinarily unlucky to not make the final with that KST. Well, from the semi. Like, obviously, I had a bit of luck getting to the semi. You know, you can't not. Oh, shit, PC. Sorry, I thought I was in commentary. I am. Oh, yes, I muted your lap before. Yeah, all right. Brilliant. Let's unmute PC. Hello, PC. Hello, Jim. Hello. Um, you talk about this being not a bad fling team. I would tell you that's a lot like bringing the sharpest of sticks to a gunfight. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what matters is what he does with the inducements. The chef hasn't fired particularly well in the first half. The claws are perfectly capable of draking trees out as if they are blamange. Um, it's all, I suppose, on whether Morg can get anything done, and my gamble is he probably can't. Yeah, boys, we're going in now. Yeah, no, it, it's it is it is absolutely horrific for the halflings, of course. Yeah, yeah, you have to go full rowdy with all your trees, all three of them, bring the whole forest to bear, uh, push more right up into their face at the same time, uh, and be prepared to drop the wizard and your agility fling all into just getting right on top of this team from the very start. I think. Yeah. The longer you leave it, the worse it's going to get. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Uh, hello. You're very quiet, find me. Over about three hills and in a small locked cupboard is their Fermier has joined us. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Now, are you hearing me better? Yes, hello. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Marco will miss this game, Elliot versus the Halfling. The literal Shire versus Mordor. <laughs> yes. yes, very well put. <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't a fairy tale. <laughs> this is the halflings are up shit creek. <laughs> yeah, this is what would actually happen if Frodo. Well, I mean, look, at least he's brought his tree friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have a feeling he might need four or even five. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow, I see MD Williams. That yeah, is that's... probably the meanest thing anyone's ever said about me. <laughs> Really quite deeply insulting. Aww. Meme on my age, fine. <laughs> Meme on my beard and I'm with you. Joke about my appalling singing and I'm, I'm laughing along. <laughs> I would even have taken occasional Jeremy Clarkson and try and laugh it off, but Nigel Farage, my goodness, you know how to hurt a man. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Anyway, can you share the screen, uh, Jimmy? Oh, yes, I sorry, to... yeah, I, I meant to do that. I knew, I'd, I knew I'd forgotten something when PC said that, uh, you know, but then it was the muting from the other night, yeah, but I, I, I knew I'd forgotten something, and I knew it was my fault, and that's why it was my fault. Yeah, right? and, well, the Halflings reach second uh, game of the challenge. I think that's the most they can ask for. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, it really kind of is. Especially with this draw, right? Like, it's just... Oh, it super is. I mean, I... I mean, they have a surprising amount of mighty bloat for being halfling. Yes. yes, look, we, we should take this seriously and look for wind conditions. I mean, there are wind conditions, aren't there? Like I said, the trees can get hold of these rotters. The pesticles are, are no sturdier than beastmen if they can get hold of those, although that's a lot harder than with beastmen because, of course, there is the rotters to just be the fire. There's the fouling high roll that does nothing. Oh, dear, yeah. And there are two armorate warriors, right? There are, yes. yep. Two armor eight warriors. They are like you know, Elliot's obviously going to be panicking about these guys, trying to not get them hit as much as possible. Because yeah, if they take sustained mighty blow hits, you know, even if he wins, even if he like knows he's won. I know, I know, Elliot likes to say it's not over and everything, but realistically, yeah, realistically, he knows he's gargantuan favorite for this game. And yes, you know, which can bring its own pressures, can't it? I mean, we we talked in the last round about people taking their eyes slightly off the ball when they look like they've got the game in hand. Yeah. Um, I just don't think Elliot's the type to do that. If anything, he plays slightly tighter, doesn't he, in these yes. sorts of situations. Yeah, and it is in the balance still. Like, yes, you're a massive favourite, but it is in the balance because he does have four huge strength guys that can cast people. So, like, it's yeah. it's a weird match. You know you're a massive favourite, but you know that it, it can go wrong if you're unlucky and stuff. And, and you know, Claw Mighty eventually will pay off, but it, it, there's no reason that it will pay off in this game, even. You know, like, <laughs> like you know, weight of blocks, it will, it will, it is good, isn't it? You know? But <laughs> even in the stretch of one game, Claw Mighty can just not fire. Like, Claw Palm, it's harder to not fire, but Claw, yep. Claw Mighty can definitely not fire. But having oh, said oh. all of that, oh, very early in with the fireball, but I mean, I like it. He needs a high roll result, and it was right over several key players. Hmm doesn't actually remove any annoyingly. No, if Moore gets a pow here, he can get right on the ball. He can. Nope. The, oh. the halfling seems allergic oh. to the oh. pals. Oh, Big rowdy re-roll. Oh, he can't oh. get on the ball though because he's, he's got no push squares. Mm. No, the, the dead bodies cover it all up. Yeah, oh shit. But still, it's, it's you know, it's a lot of aggression. It's stunties into your backfield. It's a ball on the ground. It's things that Elliot will not want to have seen except He'll be happy the wizard's gone off without removing anyone, of course. Yep. And now we've got to put the stunties in in harm's way and just try and keep everything in place and sort it out next turn, don't we? Yeah. So, so yeah, so, so this is what I was trying to say before anyway. Like, I got sidetracked going, droning <laughs> on and on and on about uh, this match. But the thing for Elliot is, he, even though he knows, because he knows he's massive favourite, he's got to be worried about, like, taking attrition for the rest of the tournament as well, right? So that, 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 can, Im that can impact how he plays this match because he's definitely going to want to, like, not power up or KO on everything, right? He's, he's definitely going to think, I've won this match I need to like think about the rest of Chalice as well he has to go there doesn't he oh. yep good had to, yeah. had to go there to stop the, uh, the strength 5 block frenzy blitz <laughs> this is only the tackler but he could he not get it's, away from it, him because it's his... probably still coming anyway Jim um, I mean it is a it's a plus agility piece as well isn't it so it's a what three it's a three four to get the two die though isn't it That's no yeah he's, he's hitting with the tackler he's got this edge four tackler here yeah Yes, because if Elliot loses a couple of good players, that's a massive hit, you know, uh, losing a warrior and one of the pestigors. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Well, if possible. <laughs> a snake on this GFI would change things a lot. Yeah. Ah, but no, the three die does come. Um, look, all the things that helped our pick out in the first round are true here again. Flings against Nurgle isn't the worst of matchups for them. The strength four isn't any better against the flings than strength three players are. So there is that. Their big strong piece, the you know the beast can be dealt with by a tree and completely negated. Though it's yeah, I thought it would just come on some twos, on some threes, and it did. Um, so there are some things here to give the flings hope, but they sort of needed those two turns to go a bit better, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. This vampire is just completely amazing, isn't it? Basically, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now and you're incredibly lucky that he hasn't aged out. I don't claim to understand the aging rules. I've been told that he will not face another role now, even if he survives the fight. Yes, correct. Yeah, he played till the absolute. He got really lucky. He avoided. I think he avoided two roles to to. 
to retire so then he played up to the exact number that he won't have to make the you know he won't actually have to retire right until after the final <laughs> well certainly Elliot has been uh, I think one could certainly say gamey without fear of contradiction in this noble pursuit. <laughs> yes. That's a fair fair word there. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Like, that's fair. That, that's the risk that streamers run, right? You know, yeah. they, they put themselves out there. Absolutely. And people can dodge them or people can snipe them. And, and both happen with gear band. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. it's easy to say, oh, so-and-so sniped so-and-so, but, you know, nobody knows how many times anybody's dodged somebody, do they? <laughs> you know? no, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not levelling criticism, I'm merely remarking it is a thing. Oh, yeah, I know, but, like, but, but not, some people have criticised him, some people have criticised him, and the thing yeah. is, that that's streaming, that's streaming, and, like, people that's, say... Yeah. People say streamers have an advantage because people can avoid them, well, people can also snipe them, so that, that's just the way it is with streaming as well, so it's not... It's not good or bad really you can argue about whether you would do the same or not but the thing is no one knows how many times people are avoided right and and if americans have any sense Kadenik should be the most avoided person in, in blood Bowl, <laughs> he? he certainly should <laughs> um, I, I think there was a comedic piece where uh, whilst necronome was mentioned jim <laughs> the specific refrain i chose was and they dodged me so we span through and they dodged me so we span through so we snuck necronome at 3 a.m yeah. Uh, I did deliberately put those two phrases together because I do believe yes. there's equally as much dodging as sniping. Yeah. But when uh, Elliot went versus Necronome at 3 a.m., <laughs> Elliot told him clearly in his chat. Yes, I will be coming for you. Yes, it was a, it was it wasn't a snipe. It was an open challenge in the <laughs> middle of the, the square of the city. You know, next to the cathedral, shouting to you know, come here. <laughs> <laughs> and if Necronome could have uh, could have also destroyed the uh, yeah yeah it wasn't uh, Elio Steve, that, you know yeah. it's not like a sniper oh, there was know. huge risk in it absolutely I mean he did bend it to every single advantage he could possibly have able to full scum or whiz without any response from Necro but it still carried its own dangers any game of Blood Bowl darts uh, Elio is very good he is probably one of the best players to have not won Chalice though I think Devo takes that title, or, you know, Jimmy has a shout to it too. Thanks. Um, but Elliot's right you, up you there. Too, you too, PC, you too, PC. You have no, I mean, I, either, and, uh, I've only been considered a decent uh, player. Yeah, I've, been doing it, I've been doing it a lot less. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had, you know, perhaps a dozen goes and not got that. So, yes, I think that's fair. But yeah, so the people say that Elio the sniping Necronome was the worst sniping I've ever seen. <laughs> well, <laughs> worst? What does worst spin, mean? What's spin, worst? I'll spin too. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah you, you're, not, you're not a great sniper if you say, Hello, I'm going to shoot you in the head now. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. You versus me. One versus one. Come on. You might want to duck. <laughs> right, so this drive's over. Unfortunately, after the uh, the spaffed wizard yeah. did not get recovered into a place that was defendable, the um, Chaos have fully secured this drive. Chaos and the Nurgle have fully secured this drive. Morg has been taken down, but not out. Uh, we do have some attrition on the flings, but a lot less than perhaps we would have expected. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the disappointing side is probably not Probably not enough Nurgle have disappeared to really give the flings hope. No. To, to be fair, maybe he's not. It's it's fine amount. I think it's a fine amount of, of attrition, to be honest, because he's lost his claw pommel, right? Because he can get fouled out. So his claw pommel is never going to be able to pile on very effectively. Like, yeah, obviously, you're yeah. going to pile on Morgul or whatever if you get the chance. Oh, here we go. Oh, dear. Um, but, like, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't expect too much just because the fact that you can't pile on and you've only got claw mighties, but obviously weight of blocks is, is, is going to be pretty big. <laughs> pretty significant weight of blocks for the... Uh, well, I mean, also, it gets to that point, doesn't it? If you're fighting four huge, great things, that you, you actually can't get hold of the flings to the extent that you'd want to. Yeah. And the little buggers won't stand still for you to help you do it. And so half of the halfling team is a string, a string six. So. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I was just thinking maybe with that focus they might have removed a tree already and just I was thinking that they did. So yeah. <laughs> I think we're about on par now. And the flings has the one turn chance here. 
Lord Lemon. Did you think he sounds bad? He sounds fine in in my in my headset. Yeah, it sounds like a uh, in a bigger room, but yeah, other than that. Oh uh, well, I do apologise. Yeah, if that sounds, sounds sounds fine to me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's a Discord thing or I don't know. Maybe it is. is. I might just quickly leave and rejoin them and see if they get to the better connection. Sweet. Sweet. Jimmy's in the top 100 players to have not won the chalice. Thanks, Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's quite a few notable names that have had quite a few tilts at it and not managed to get there. Yeah, yeah well, the problem with the top 100 players that have, no, have won chalice is everybody that hasn't won chalice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, I've had I've had surprisingly few runs at Chalice to be honest. Like PC might have even had more chances than me. Let's let's have a look. Ooh, nearly. Nice win. Nice win percent, isn't it? It's not bad considering the first couple I came into were um, dwarf teams I snuck in with in the first and some of the second. And then the third one was a problem. I just, I just very rarely qualified. I, I, I don't know. It's weird how I, I guess I played. I played at a time for a while. It was like actually pretty hard to qualify, and uh, now it's obviously pretty easy for us. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, and there was a time when it was actually proper hard to qualify, and and Cruz still qualified every single time without fail. Yep. You know? Yes, which I mean, I think even then he wasn't quite the level he is now. I think there was more grinding and less quality then from him. Uh, yeah. But he's always combined both of those things. Yeah, and he's open about that. You know, that's again not a contentious thing to say. No, and it's it's a compliment. I think. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. It's incredible that he just he just made one spot his his own every single season basically. Same as Elliot, isn't it? Elliot's qualified loads of times with loads of different teams. Yes, which is, I mean, it's why I think him and Dave are probably the two names I would mention first as people I felt would do a chalice, and I, I can't claim to know the whole scene. And maybe an Arzawain or a, you know, Andre was perhaps... Oh, Arzawain, or on, Arzawain doesn't deserve anything. Uh, but yeah, Andre maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in terms of numbers and entries and quality of coach, but yes, I think moral fibre, if that was taken into account, we could look again at things. <laughs> so there we are. I mean, that's it's not the worst situation for the Flings. They've lost a couple, but only a couple. Um, all their big guys are fine, though they have had to throw in a pot out to make that happen. Um, it could be worse, couldn't it, Jim? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> They're going to have no big guys left. <laughs> but... Um... Yeah, it's about it's about as bad. Like they can't have much hope, right? They know they've got to get lucky to win. They haven't got lucky, so they're screwed. Basically, like it's it's almost over. Like it it started off almost over, and yes. they, they haven't got any. Okay, they haven't got horrendous bad luck. Like you know, they could have they could have lost all three. No, trades. neither end of, the, end of the bell curve has happened yet, has it? Uh, you still feel there's a 70 percent chance on any give and drive that it all ends for the Flames, but it hasn't quite yet. Um, but nothing that would really have turned it around from the Wiz didn't remove anyone here. It also didn't give them the ball. Um, so, yeah. However, a big line of scrimmage here, two or three removals, getting them up on numbers for the drive and making it much harder to take care of these monsters. And survive a couple of turns without losing one of the four, and we could be in a situation where they win the half. And they still got two reserves, so they can still, yep. you know, take about four cars this drive and still have something for overtime. But it's asking a lot. Like I, I think really you're is. a bit biased, though, as the is the greatest halfling coach of all time. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think that Flings would have won already if more than deeper than my blood was too. They barely knocked anybody over in the entire match. They were just getting three dice pushes continuously. <laughs> He's yes. had some horrible dice, the, the Fling. The fling. Honestly, Harvick has had some horrible dice. Yeah, they, it really hasn't helped. The only turn he had good dice was when he pushed all of those GFIs and dodges with the Flings after the Wiz, and that all worked. But it still wasn't quite enough. So, yeah, his one turn of good dice was just nowhere near enough. He needed 
other things to have happened first or, or, or you know, could, simultaneously a couple of removals on that wears could have really changed it. Okay, and Elliot protecting his armor race, which is, you know, he always would yep. be, wouldn't he? There was an argument for Blitz dodging with Morg, really, especially if he'd had plus two. If he had a mighty blow plus two, I think he would have Blitz dodged the, uh, the big Nurgle oh. win, obviously. If he'd had a mighty blow plus two, he would have uh, broken armor on yeah. the said Nurgle warrior. So yeah, plus, obviously mighty blow plus two is a hell of a lot better than plus one. Oh, well, it's massively, you know, in a bell curve, it, you know, plus two is, is a lot more than double, isn't it? Yeah. It really pushes those, uh, those numbers well. Um, the fouls really aren't working either, Jim, at the moment. It's just nothing is coming up for the flings, is it? No, he's given himself the chance to get lucky. Like, it's 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 not a mark yeah. against him at all. And then instantly... No, no, he's you know, done the right things. But just instantly, you know... <laughs> I can okay. like the whiz. You know, I think you had to go early with it because when you've still got enough that there's a chance you win and survive. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's on a massive clock, isn't he? Yeah. Let's do something about this before the team's dead. And there we go, here's the problem, you know, the beast straight on to two flings, they're going to struggle to get anywhere, so Morg's going to have to deal with that. And he's got... The beast was quite well controlled. He's got his, he's got his armor raids on flings rather than big boys. <laughs> Can't not, like, not blitzable, is he, with him, he'd have to GFI to hit him. Morg's tied up, so he, he, you know, Elliot is doing the right things uh, yep. for his team, as well as you know being able to win the game as well. Yeah, exactly, Pedro. I mean, that's obviously a thing. Like, if he if he actually wanted to win Chalice, picking flings, the it's doing not the, really <laughs> it's not the way to win Chalice. No, <laughs> no but you still want to put up a good show, don't you? You want to do your best with that race. Um, I don't know how deep, fl deep flings I've ever got, but I'd have thought round three would be right up there. I think they've got the semi-final once. Um, <laughs> wow. But like once, yeah, whereas whereas Augers have won a game once. <laughs> well, not twice, yes, though, but that's twice. all they've ever done. <laughs> that's all they've done. But Augers are the ultimate griefer team. I mean, you create a team to kill other teams. You know you are never going to win anything. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and like you know, that, that that's my attitude, and PC's attitude is that you do your best with what you've got. But you know, there's are yeah. some people that just play flings just because they like them and they're having a laugh, and he might have just not even qualified on purpose. But he does seem to be playing quite well and giving himself the oh, chance to get lucky, doesn't he? So other stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've I've liked what he's done. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there hasn't been anything. I thought, my goodness, what's going on here? It's it's always been the right sort of shapes. He's putting the right blitzes. He is trying to you know get those high rolls because he needs to. He went really rowdy from the first turn, which is what I said he had to try and do. It's, it's all been, I think, as good as you can hope for, Jim. It's just that he's brought a plastic spoon to a gunfight. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is essentially the problem. Peter <laughs> said a branch he found on, uh, on the park. <laughs> as, as you've said before, I, I did love the quote, so I'm stealing it. Um, this one was lost at the race selection screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's not lost yet. It's not. No, he's still got a chance. You know, Elliot's only got one reroll. He hasn't had yep. any bad dice at all in the match yet. But if he gets some, <laughs> something well, I mean, could happen. It, while that's true, he's also done a very good job at not really rolling a lot of dice, which is yeah. uh, is often the secret to not getting bad ones. Yeah. Right, I mean, you know, we all know Elliot's a great player, and he's going to yeah. do pretty much the right thing all the time and this is tailor made for him as well right like uh, yeah. you know Rick's a good coach but Rick tends to go a bit more high risk than Elliot but yes. against halflings when you're getting hit with the uh, oh. hit with the chef then you absolutely you know you've got a far better team than somebody and you've been chef then uh, then Elliot's style is perfect to just shut it down and shut yeah down I, I have, absolutely agree uh, and if anything, as I said, he, he, he perhaps tightens the ball to another couple of turns in the chalice often, which to sometimes I think has been to his detriment. Uh, but here it's exactly the right sort of play, isn't it? Very conservative, very percentage-based. Wait your time, trust your team, know what skills you've got, and they will pay off in the long term. Yep. Don't Does he panic hit the, the little things. Does he hit the ball here? It's a lot of dice, isn't it? No, he doesn't. I, I mean, it, it, also, I just don't think he wants to risk the vampire. 
Yeah. Oh, oh no, this indeed. is much better. Look at that. Oh, chain. I didn't yeah, see I didn't lovely. see the halfling for the chain. Had I seen the player for the chain, I would have called that, but I didn't Because I didn't it's impossible see to see half of the halfling team because they're hidden behind uh, the other players. Yeah. That's the Boris have done tonight. Yeah, oh, that was that was that that was the obvious. That was the, uh, like that very classy Elliot. Yeah. And gets the big old pal. Well, I think we're probably done. Probably. Follow though, big follow. Danger follow there into, yeah, into the tree. Not what I would have done, but who can say if it's good or bad? <laughs> oh, because he was getting a one D on the tree. Okay, he was taking. I see. The tree. On a blockless, so it was uh, yeah, not a bad position to be in. Not as bad. I still wouldn't have. Fifty percent dice, so it's okay, isn't it? Yeah, I still wouldn't have followed, but like fair enough. Not also terrible. pretty much, it, it's much more likely to put a tackle zone on the ball, isn't it? Yes, yeah. But at risk, as you say. At this point, at this point, I would have been protecting my players more. I would have, I would have definitely made the decision to protect them. Sure enough. <laughs> like you say, we like what well, this Halfling's decisions have been except to coach Halflings. <laughs> yeah. Um, Apple it straight on that vulnerable piece and gets the stun, but the stun has been the... Has been the, the result he won't have enjoyed seeing this game because it's happened a lot. Oh, and a two plus fail there. Oh, gets the reroll. And he's off. <laughs> the fatal. Oh, it wasn't the two, it wasn't the, the agility two. The agility four, it was uh, an ordinary flick. Yeah, yeah, the edge uh, It was a three was, plus pickup, yeah. Yeah, the edge four was Cass. <laughs> I Take think it's some time ago. A couple of times ago, the half in should have tried to throw teammate to score. Yeah, maybe. Just, yeah. You know, just to go 1-1. One, one. It's hard though, isn't it? Because they're, they're very likely to fumble with all the Nogue Warriors around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's true, yes. There's a starting presence, yes, throwing teammate. And going for it yourself is it, slower enough that it burns a couple of turns, which isn't bad. Where he wanted a TTM was the first turn of overtime. However, that's that's very bad. <laughs> yeah. so, somewhat predictably, the potato flame did not manage to survive, backed up by the death of a tree. Timber. They have three halflings left on the beach. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th this was inevitable, wasn't it? Eventually, like that, you yeah. know. It was it was so grim for the halflings. They had to get the dice and the play to turn it around. And he had the play. He just didn't get the dice, did he? Ooh, Morg taking out. This this is the problem now with any one of those four towers of power gone. <laughs> There's enough Nogal around to start bullying the other ones. Yeah. Cheating their targets, killing a will. <laughs> Morg's the only real threat left on the pitch because of his move. So that's the one they'll concentrate on. Perfect. I'm finished in time for my son's um, parents' evening. Glorious. And I'm oh, finished in time. Are. There you are. <laughs> and I'm finished in time for Battle Brothers. Way. Hey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. So yeah, Bo both have played great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it, it's been fine. Yeah, it's really nice to see a well-played game. I mean, a bit sad because I do think the Flings took the chances they had. They came with everything they had at the start. They threw the whiz as early as it was possible to really get a good result and take the ball. It just, it was never quite enough. They threw in the fouls, didn't they? And yep. all of those were just stuns. Yeah. On, on another day, on another day, this could have gone so much worse for, for Elliot. Oh, yes. Oh, it was all the right plans. Yeah. Better coach than a lot of finals, to be honest. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, that's absolutely. <laughs> I, I literally can't think of anything I've thought that's just terrible. What the hell's going on? It's all been completely fine. Even this, Elliot's now in a position where he can come back and decide where the ball goes. Even this is fine. Yeah. Although a little bit arrogant, but the ball <laughs> theoretically could get hold of it, but it's it's fine. I suspect Morg's going to be on his ass, but if he isn't, there is a tiny risk. But there's also the chance of him leveling, right? Or getting closer to level, so he's got, yeah. he's got to take it, hasn't he? He's got to yeah, push absolutely. forward. 
And he's got, if, you, if you're going to greed against anybody, <laughs> flings with about four yeah, players I, left on the field is, is a pretty good one to go for. <laughs> yeah, two, two trees and a, a controlled morgue isn't the worst of options. I, I, I think we could have tried the five plus three plus there, but... Yeah, I think you should have. It's done. a bit pointless, isn't it? It is, that's the thing. Like, when you get to this point, you've just yeah. lost, and it's like, okay, yeah, you can no. try things, but... It doesn't even matter if it works. <laughs> oh, the, oh, that is the problem. Oh, <laughs> well, he tried to brave two reds instead, two dice uphill. Um, to everyone's great shock, that didn't work. Yeah. The problem, the, and also an additional problem with the five three, like running around to hit blitz with Morg is, um, he would have had to get the tentacles away. And okay, he's plus one strength, but even with plus one strength, it happens a reasonable amount of it the is, time, doesn't it? It is. That wasn't impossible. It would stop him. I still have tried the five three. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite reasonable. I don't know which was better. Like, I would, I would probably have to sambre it to know. <laughs> yeah. But I think it would. I guess, I guess going with Morg means that you've got the fling's recovery. Exactly. So, so that probably the fling doesn't it. get dead. He's part of your team. That's so it's much he more spectacular. <laughs> and then you can do something afterwards when Morg solved it. Yeah, Which that's the thing. You've got to, you've got to play for your to your outs, haven't you? So even if yeah. even if the fling has got say a thirty percent chance of knockdown and Morg's got yep. a twenty five percent chance of knockdown, at the end of the day, getting the knockdown with Morg give, gives you the fling free to go go and get the score. And so yeah, so that that's it, isn't it? Playing to your outs. It's a beautiful value to the people that have survived through watching this somewhat non event game. Not only have we actually seen some lovely coaching, but a beautiful explanation from Jim there as to why people that rely on Samba. Are Idiots and can be any half decent coach because it only looks at success outcomes, not at what that means for the turn or for the position or what the fail states are throughout those success chains. It's just brute maths telling you one part of what you should be thinking about. Yeah, but like Dio said in the uh, one world one blood ball, if you don't know that maths, you should oh, yeah. know it. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it, should, it should be part of your thinking, but it just shouldn't be all of your thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's a great explanation as to why not. Thank you. And now it's just everyone on the field is down. <laughs> For yeah. the halflings. And... As... Oh, is he, he's going to skill the rookie. Is he going to skill the rookie? Interesting. I think I'd want the. I think I'd want the points on the Pestigore because I would just desperately want him to have tackle. More than like an extra yeah. block or guard. I mean, I'll, for the I'll things that he's weak against, an extra tackle on one of his hitters would be fantastic, wouldn't it? I think yeah. that would be my priority. The other hand, the rookie, you can put, you know, wrestle on him, and that's fantastic on the line of scrimmage for a bit more survivability, or in case you do lose a pest in the next round, you've got something that's developing. There's, there's compensations. Also, also, the touchdown on him is guaranteed as well, right? Like, he could have failed. Like, okay, it's 1 in 27 to not get the touchdown on the other guy. But yep. there's still a chance that you don't get the touchdown on the other guy. Whereas on him, you get it. And it puts him MVP away, two Kaz away. Like, it does a lot of things uh, to get him on 72. Guaranteed skill. It's, it is very sexy, isn't it? Guaranteed it, skill. It is. I, I guess I would have looked at the, If I was Elliot, I would have looked at the draw, right? And then thought about that, and that would have played into it like if, if he's if he's yeah. got a good chance of like a strong team next round I guess getting another guard or whatever and then if, if he's got elves the round after that then he can delay getting the tackle and stuff so I got yeah I guess it would it would depend on the draw and I would have looked ahead of this game to be honest like normally normally in in, in like cup games like obviously yes because I, I win I win the game in front of you and you're the same and then I worry about the one after yeah, yeah, and like obviously, I, I kind of know. I always kind of know what it's going to be because I, I do kind of do the kills. You know, I kind of do the cup draw and everything, and like so. You know, I've, obviously, I know that if I beat Alma, then I'm playing uh, Velahopia or Cruz. But I'm not going to let that influence this game while the game is still in contention. <laughs> no. You already decided when you are going to play. Uh, I, I've I've offered Alma uh, Monday at seven p.m., but he hasn't accepted yet. But um, that is when I would like to play. Right. Um, but yeah. He got snuck that in very quick in this round, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he just did it like a suit. He just like, did it almost as soon as it rolled. Um, so there very, you go. Uh, very dominant position and a very dominant statement to the draw. Yeah. And, uh, you know, incredible. I mean, it's fair enough, right? Every everyone knew. 
Elliot was a massive favourite, but it was a great result for him to come out, to come out clean with no injuries. And yeah, as, oh. as somebody noted, I was an idiot. Of course, he's got no apple, he's just got regen. So he could have easily, like, he couldn't just protect a star. Like, in these kind of games where you're a big favourite, you might just take one Kaz, right? And then that is when, if you take one Kaz, regen is worse yep. than, than, a, uh, than an apple. Or if you take, like, a Kaz and a key player, it's worse. Because you're, you're like, uh, what are you, one in six to get permed instead of... One in <laughs> what what whatever it is <laughs> one in nine you one in nine yeah. to get permed or one in six I don't I don't know yeah I think that's right you one in nine to get permed with an apple um, and one in six to get permed with regen so you know in, in these kind of easy ones then you, often you would like an apple he could have he, he could have induced an he could have actually overdug an ego like there was a, there was an argument for that in these kind of games right if if you flush obviously I don't think Elliot is because he's he's yeah, it's it's because of because of but yes, to, to just, as you said, to double reinsure, double invest in that vampire piece, or if it's getting towards the end of the game, a couple of the other key positionals, if really needs to be having another role on that regen, could have been a, an interesting thing to do. Yeah. Uh, but then facing another bribe, or I mean, possibly even Willow, I don't know, because he already stars. <laughs> yeah. Just have to have been a bribe, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean that, that's the thing. It's like in in CRP there was no bank rule, so so if this was CRP and after 122 games, Elliot would have had like two million in the bank or something potentially. So he would have just no, they just don't spend. Do they? Yeah. they don't need to. <laughs> yeah, so if we were playing proper rules, Elliot would Elliot would have absolutely, I think, got an ego. To, to you know, just to smooth it through for the next round, and I think he would have looked past it. But you know, he did all the right things, and so did Harpik. You know, really well played at Harpik. Yeah, I thought, really well I thought, played. Yeah, I thought that's one of the best play anyone's played in this tournament so far. <laughs> just a shame he just got no dice at all, and he had to. No, every, had to everything dice. failed for him. All the yeah. big guys were just pushing stuff around. The fouls were always coming out as stuns. <laughs> yeah, uh, and yeah, and when he threw the whiz, it didn't remove anyone. He got one stun. I mean, lots of knockdowns. Yep. But no removals and only one stun, and you'd have hoped with that bigger whiz you might get one KO at least. Yep. Much more than that, you've been lucky, but a KO wasn't that much to ask. And it, it just wasn't enough to secure the ball or, or really change the outcome. No. Elliot did well in how he responded, getting that three dice um, with tackle to make sure he took down the ball carrier. It was the, the sole moment really of threat in the game, and he, he responded really, really well. But Elliot also coached beautifully, so yeah, yep. lovely game. Yep. And so, congratulations, right. Elliot. Commiserations, Harpik. Thank you very much, Purple Chest and Fimey. Oh, Glorious pleasure. as always. Always a pleasure. I shall, I shall leave you. I now have 20 minutes to stare loomingly at my son, who actually had a fantastic report. So, this is going to be a, a very easy parents' evening. But Glorious. he doesn't need to know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Peter. See ya. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.